Doron Schaefer, it is a real honor to have you on. Talk about your former former and current involvement with basketball after playing Division I at UConn and overseas and continuing to, as you say in your book, use, the bas use basketball as a tool to really bring about um, educational, therapeutic, and empowering tools for for children and everybody in and the special unity was a big big part of the the book so far that I've read, and um, really it's for myself as a, you know, basketball has also been a part of my life since I was four years old. I remember, I think it was either me or my brother. One of our first words was ball, mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's just one of those things. You know, it's ah, uh, just it's the best. So mm -hmm. when when a friend told me about yourself and that. You know your whole journey that you played professional and now you know orthodox and practicing practicing Jew, it really hit me at home because it's something I similar to my own uh, journey. So it's really a pleasure to have you on. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you very much. Of course. So I'd I'd love to start to hear a little bit about your background growing up and your first connection with basketball and what was it that you loved so much about it. And even mm -hmm. tied a little with your upraising as a as a Jew. Um, to begin to begin with, you know, as as a child, you know, in the neighborhood, I took part of of, of the different kind of uh, uh, activities that they offered, and you know, basketball, soccer. Uh, it was something um, in, in many ways, you know, it's a uh, it's something that I did very natural, and you know, there, there was a. Uh, I was good at, but um, you know, other than different other stories, I I, I didn't had dreams uh, uh, to be a basketball a professional basketball player. You know, no, I actually even didn't want to to be a professional basketball player because you know I was always that that tallest guy in class, and and you know it, I felt uh, ashamed about it. You know, I felt. Uh, uncomfortable being all the time in the center of the attention you know ahead above everybody i prayed not to to grow as tall but you know i grew and i became six five around six five when i was 16. wow and, yeah and when i changed what, what changed my changed my mind uh around that age it, it was when they invited me to the to the junior national team in Israel, the, the 12 best player in my age. And, you know, first time I played in the European Championship against the best players in Europe and the best teams. And I saw I, I, I compete as, as equal. And that was before I put any too, too much uh, time and effort of, about <laughs> practicing. I mean, never, never came early, never stay late, you know, just played upon my natural gift that I got. And at that point, I said, look, I have something special that I should try and utilize it and, and see how far can I go. And, you know, from that point, basketball became a big part of my life. Were you playing guard? I mean, or post at that age? No, I was always, wow. a, guard, always you know, a guard. But a very tall guard, yeah. Wow. And so then you, so what was the, I remember when it came to like middle school uh, for myself and high school, you know, recognizing, like you said, that it's really something you want to just always be around and kind of playing and, you know, and, and wanting to then realize that you want to play at the next level. Uh, I'm curious, what was your regimen and, and practice and the discipline that you put into uh, to improving at the game? Yeah, as soon as I decided to, to take it more seriously and professionally, so I, I put a lot of energy in the game. You know, I, I remember, I think one... One summer, I was with like five different uh, uh, coaches, you know, basketball coach, training coach, uh, nutrition coach. Wow. Uh, and, this uh, was in high school? No, no, later on, later on. Later. When I was, you know, uh, uh, adult playing professional, but then also somebody for, for working on the mental aspect. Mm. Uh, uh, That's and, what uh, my, my particular interests are in nowadays. Mental yeah, part. and the mental part, yeah, I think it's the most important part, and uh, yeah, obviously, you know, uh, you put you put effort in, in, in anything you put effort or, and, and time and, and energy, so uh, usually, usually good things happen. What was, uh, what were, if you could share maybe some of the mental performance 
um, keys or some things that really stuck with you that you translated onto the court and off the court? Because it was that was an area I mentioned that is like very passionate. But nowadays, is because I, I always felt when I was playing, focused so much on the physical aspect. Like you know, I like to say as much time as we're studying Torah these days. That's how many hours I'm. I was on the court, dribbling, shooting, and but I felt like I had the challenge of when I got on the court, I wasn't whether it was a coach or performance anxieties like I wasn't able to like really just just play at times it wasn't and in, in, but I didn't feel at that age or the people I were around were also so knowledgeable about it they would they would say things like you have all the physical skills but the mental just isn't there but it was just kind of like you're thrown on the bus it wasn't until I got connected and learned uh, about sports psychology and even reading maybe you've read the Mindful Athlete by George Mumford, who worked with Kobe Bryant and and Michael Jordan, and even Shaquille O'Neal, that like opened me up to the realm of the mind and mental performance. So could you could you share a little bit uh, about that and what you've learned? I think during the career and especially uh, after crises and and uh, and and. Uh, times that you know were 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 challenging and, and difficult either either on the physical level or the mental level i think that that uh, ignited me the good fire to start and search you know something uh, more deep inside of me or something uh, on, the, on the mental or spiritual level in order to find balance in a in a very challenging and and not easy world to live in you know the, the professional uh, the game is is very demanding from a very early age, uh, uh, you can be uh, you know, on one game on the top of the world, and the next game, you know, they they, uh, they boo you the the fans, and and uh, it's very intense and very not easy to deal with. And I think it it, it I started by reading books, uh, through books, uh, through clinics that I did, and books that are talking about you know the spirit, about about, about the, the mental aspect. I, I remember. The Alchemist, you know, a very mm-hmm. one of my first uh, 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 books that I was uh, impacted by the the professional uh, the the celestial prophecy. I think it was also there, there were spiritual uh, books, but you know they they gave me nutrition to the soul, you know, to, and 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 uh, and then later on, you know, it, it was uh, the journey to to India and to South America and Buddhism oh. meditation. Oh, so you... yeah and, uh, and and different kind of uh, techniques that help me to 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 balance uh, myself and find st- strength from within and uh, in different were kind those of... all after your playing career or even in between it was in between it was after and before because uh, i don't know how much you're familiar with my story yeah. but at the age of 28 i retired and then the, the top of my career I felt, you know, that I need some uh, time, time out, you know, for my soul, for to 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 explore more things in life, mm-hmm. and with all the blessing that basketball brought to my life. Uh, like I said, it was a very demanding uh, situation and and, and uh, environment to be from an early age, and in some point, uh, my my soul wanted to uh, yeah. to, to search and to soar to other uh, other places in in uh, in my journey. And it wasn't an easy decision to to make. I wrote about it in my my autobiography, but uh, eventually I was you know I was happy that I stayed and listened to my heart, and made that uh, that that very uh, unconventional act to to retire in the age of 80, 28 in Maccabi Tel Aviv, still still with the, a contract with a lot of money to to, to the years to come. And then I really went deep into my spiritual journey, you know, went, went mm. to India, India and, and, and search and learn and study Buddhism and then go to South America and, and search and experience with shamanism wow. and uh, getting a lot of tools uh, uh, to, to, to find balance in life uh, and live more healthy. And then, you know, naturally, I, I ended up coming back to the roots, to, to Judaism, you know, from Buddhism to shamanism to Judaism. 
and and finding the Torah, you know, everything I was searching for, you know, to find the to find a, a balanced way to live life in all aspects, body, mind, and soul. Uh, and until today, the Torah is a big part of my life uh, that helped me to be, I think, by the way, to, to, to be a mensch. It's like we'll talk about my, my, my book uh, that yeah. I translated, but I, I, I feel that that's the, the most important uh, uh, challenge in our life, no matter what we do or don't do, to, to be a mensch, to, to, to work on our values, to have good deeds. I think this is something that the world needs the most. You know, good values and, and good deeds and good courtesy in order to find the peace that we're searching for for many, many years. Yeah. Wow, there's there's a lot I'd love to unpack there. Uh, perhaps to start. So you mentioned you retired at 28. Was that yeah. after you also you also wrote about how you um you were recovering from cancer? Yes, well, no, the cancer was discovered after I retired, a year and a half after. So you met, but you mentioned you had cancer and then you came back to play for a couple. Yes, of years. yes. After I, I retired, the age of age of twenty eight, a year and a half after they they I discovered cancer in my body, uh, mm -hmm. and then after I uh, got recovered, uh, I came back to play. Yes, actually two and a half years after I retired. Wow. So when how was your what was how was the connection with with Judaism growing up that when you were experiencing this uh, wanting to explore more that you went to, you know, the East. Yes, I didn't, uh, uh, you know, I, I learned, I studied, I grew up in a, in a family that, you know, a secular family, although yeah. I, very, I, I very much don't like those, uh, those uh, uh, yeah, titles. I yeah. think the Lubavitch uh, rabbi said many years ago, there's no secular, no religion. Uh -huh. Everybody are Jews. And you yeah. can open it and say, uh, eventually, there's, uh, everybody are human beings. And then everybody are creatures of God. You know, this is the point we want to get united eventually. Uh, but uh, I, I grew up, you know, it's funny that in the years, when I was two and a, two and a half years old until the age of five, I... We, we were living in New York, in Queens, and I studied in a Salomon Schechter uh, kindergarten, and that was, you know, my my uh, taste of Judaism, because, you know, I, we lived, you know, we, we celebrate the holidays, but it was nothing about, I didn't know much about studying Torah or Shabbat or praying, mm -hmm. or there is a God or there isn't a God. So for me, everything was new. And when I started my spiritual journey, it was like many, many youngsters in Israel that they start in the in the Far East or different places. And Why do you think that is? A, a few reasons. First of all, you say a lot of times, you know, you have to uh, to to create distance from something in order to appreciate it and to know that it's uh, it's there near you, like always, uh, you know, uh, under under wherever you are but uh, I think another reason might be that unfortunately there's a lot of uh, 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 religion people that you know that that, that behave in a not, not not a good way mm. like what the, the prophet says and the, and the sages said about the Torah it can be a some chayim the some of it you know it can it can it can work and help you be a, a better person and and, 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 and and a better man and unfortunately can take you to not a good place and it, that depends what you do with it you know and and unfortunately there are, there are people in all religions and also in Judaism yeah. that you know are dressed like uh, religion people and they act and not like the Torah really say and yeah. then people feel that, you know, if that's the Torah, they don't want anything to do with it, and they look for uh, other sources and places to give them nutrition to their soul and, and answers for the question. For So if you ask why it happens, I think that might be two reasons, that one, that people, uh, you know, uh, are afraid to come close to the Torah because what they see uh, in certain people and then uh, the other thing that you know maybe also in Israel the, the life might be so intense so you don't have to you, you don't have the time to stop 
and to observe and to ask the question. And then when you go outside to India or to other places, you're more relaxed and more quiet and centered to, to hear your heart and your soul. And, and many really people come yeah. after that journey back to, to their roots, back home to, to, to the Judaism and Torah. Yeah. No, it's and I might, I might, I've, I've even spoken to some rabbis yeah, about I just, it. I just yeah, say yeah. it's important to mention that today I can still do meditation and mindfulness. Yeah. You know? And, and, and it, it, the, the Torah says, Chokhmah b'goyim ta'amin, that there's wisdom mm -hmm. also in other places. And it's beautiful to, to connect. But uh, obviously, naturally, you know, as a Jew that lives in Israel, you know, uh, my, my main source is, is, uh, is the Torah. But how do you, so a lot of rabbis, let's say, or even spiritual, Jewish spiritual, spiritual leaders, and even the uh, the Rebbe, as you mentioned, um, the Lubavitcher Rebbe, is also uh, tonight is, is Gimel, well, by you, it's, it's Gimel Tamas, that's so honor of his now 30 years of leadership, or, you know, since, well, even longer than that, 30, 30 years since, um, however you want to describe the day for, um and what you also you mentioned something you have to feel like you distance yourself from something and um it's interesting like to to recognize what's near it's also how i felt with with basketball so when i i want to get to it but i did bring up that this kind of that a lot of maybe rabbis or individuals will say let's say there's a a harm per se of you know getting into some of these practices or people going to east and god uh god willing and thank god to uh, for a lot of us it does help return a person to the torah but for some let's say even like a lot of popular um spiritual leaders you could say in pop culture in um america are are actual Jews, but they don't necessarily return to practicing Torah mitzvahs. What do you have perhaps an idea as someone who went there and and also what was it that led you to re-explore um, the Torah and the mitzvahs? It's a very individual uh, journey, you know. Yeah. Each one has its own. Uh, they say all the all the rivers go to the to the ocean. How the, the, there's a sentence in Hebrew. I don't know if it uh, is familiar in, in, in English, but uh, you know, eventually everybody everybody are, are are going to the to the same place, but there are different ways to to get there, and and dif different Jews have also different ways, and also it's 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 a part of a journey, you know. It's it's it might change in, in the future, uh, uh, but I feel you know there is. I, I I make like a, a difference between between the mitzvahs uh, between a uh, man and God and between the, the mitzvah between people you know like like there's the the Shabbat and the tefillin and the studying Torah that's between man and God and there is you know respect the elder and 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 you know and 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 uh, and, and have peace peace with your wife and and help the 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 poor ones so i i i think the the mitzvahs that between a man and his god this is something very very uh, individual that uh, uh, we cannot we don't know and we shouldn't uh, interrupt and interfere in each person way to work with god okay but i believe that between us between uh, human beings between people we must uh, uh, everybody Commit to that, okay? To respect our parents, to 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 not not, not to cheat, not to steal, not to 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 murder, okay? Those things uh, are very essential for for society, okay? Mm -hmm. Now they both have the same root, okay? But but if if between man and God, this is uh, uh, one thing, but it's much more important to see how between us. Yeah, we, we get get it work, and 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 I, I find that it's very individual. Each one has his own rhythm, his own flavor in in working God and connecting with with God, and and I think we a lot of time make a mistake when we judge others, 
and we try to preach yeah. other what they have to do and don't have to do and i i, I personally you know uh, uh, i don't feel like a policeman of god you know to tell somebody else what to do or not but i do think what about what about being like how to how to be a guide with somebody how can we now that you've gone full circle so to speak help let's say another an, a, other young individuals so they don't even they don't have to leave to recognize what's what's near them i i share from my experience you know and today what i do i really bring torah to to uh, uh, in a language that uh, uh, everybody can connect you know through through basketball for example you know that that's the the, the book that i wrote and the, uh, today i give lectures and and clinics uh, of you know and in using the game as um as you know the, as 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 example for the game of life and to see how the torah can connect in every aspect in our life okay mm -hmm. uh, the torah is talking about about you know and uh, love each other, your neighbor like like loving yourself okay so you can uh, see it in the basketball game you know when a referee make a yeah. call that you don't like so how do we act you know one of the strongest messages in that i give in my book and my lecture that remember that the ball is in our hand we have to take responsibility we mm -hmm. have the the, the 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 freedom to choose you know how to react what to think how to talk what to say when to say how to 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 behave and this is important to re to re remind us again and again and not be like a victim or act in a, in a, in a way without thinking okay and taking responsibility so this all, all of these things of the torah you can find them in in a basketball game and torah yeah. is full of full of uh, 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 information and give tools and way how to deal with their jealousy with our okay with our uh, yetzarim yeah how do you say in english the uh, inclinations at the vote yeah or dealing with all our, our challenging in life to become a more healthy a more balanced a, a, a better man to become a mensch beautiful i'd love to talk a little bit more about the now about the book kind of some pages insights that i've been able to read so far well, so I'll put a link, but for anybody listening, it's called Mensch MVP. Mensch VP. Um, Mensch VP. Thank you. Mensch VP. Becoming the most valuable player in the game of life. Um, so a couple of things that stuck out so far that I wanted to listen ask about, and I'm looking forward to reading the rest. But um <clears throat> so you mentioned one of the early on chapters, you know, this you share the story. Um, in in connection with with uh, playing with Ray Allen, where I grew up, you know, being a shooter myself, you know, watching Ray Allen is so awesome. Must have been great to to play alongside him. But you mentioned that he had that quote that really hit me the other day when I heard it. That some people, where was it? Some people want it to happen. happen. Some people wish it will happen, and others make it happen. And you mentioned the story, you know, of the. I can read it quick, quickly here in the case somebody's not familiar. But there's a story of a Jew who lived on a house on a beach. One day there was a mighty rainstorm that threatened to the flood the houses in the beach town. And authorities put out a warning to the residents to evacuate their homes. The Jew who was observant told himself he had nothing to worry about because God would protect him. Et cetera, I'm not, I'll, I'll skip a few parts. But a man came in, a, and he, he had to get on his roof and a man came in a rowboat and asked him to join the boat, and he said he refused, preferring to wait for his savior. Then he had another option, a helicopter, and a, and then um, a boat, and each time he refused it, and when he, he ended up dying, and he went to heaven, and Hashem asked, or he told God, he said, I trusted you, I had faith in you, why didn't you save me? Why did you leave me to die? And God answered him, I tried, I sent a rowboat, a rescue boat, and a helicopter, and you didn't even reach your hand in return hmm. like that that story comes up a few times in my life and perhaps a perhaps a question i can ask on it is how do you find the balance or the harmony with making it happen without trying to force an outcome and sometimes let's say god does bring us these 
different things to come up that say, but that not doesn't necessarily is isn't necessarily the the answer or the savior to take. It's a big question, you know. It's something that there's no black and white answer. Uh, it's very very individual, and it changed from different person and to different time. Uh, it's uh, and I, we have to pray to find this balance, knowing when to act and when to, when to let go. Yeah, uh, you can see it in the basketball game. Sometimes uh, you know you try and take over the game. And you know, it just caused the, the opposite, you know, and bad things happen, it doesn't work, and we're forcing ourselves. And sometimes we, we take a step back and waiting for the game to come to us, and nothing happens as well. Yeah. Okay, so, so there's time for this and time for that. And this is, I think, something we have to be very much connected uh, with ourselves and with life around us in order to know when to do and when to let go, okay, and when to, 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 to take a step back. And I think one of the balance, well, one of the indications that we are on, on, on the right path, or let's say uh, uh, in a balanced place, that, that, that's our, our, I think, our, our uh, uh, physical and mental situation. You know, when, when somebody is doing, doing something uh, uh, in the right time, in the right place, I think one of the outcomes that is happy, yes, that is healthy, okay? The same with food, you know, not to eat too much and not too little, okay? So... The, you even the, apply the, it even to, learning, even to learning Torah. And, yes, know, yes, in, yes. In, 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 in yeshiva myself, I think I experienced that because it comes from that athlete mentality. Sometimes, at least myself, the very, like, um, what's, the, what's the word? Tenacious. In a positive yeah, yeah. Sense, with, like... with, with, with not, not, not in a balanced way, definitely. It happens on the spiritual world as, as well, and, and, and there it might be more dangerous because, you know, you do it in, in the name of God and, and in the name of the halacha, but it's much more than that. Uh, I say, for me, the Torah is, 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 is everything but black and white. Okay, it's so in the individual to find your place in the Torah. Each Jew says a letter in the Torah. It's uh, so many flavors, and it's a, a never-ending journey of finding your balance and lo lachmir lo lakel, not not to 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 climb up too too high on a tree and not to to run away from taking responsibility. And this is a, a, a life challenge. And one indication, like I said, that we're doing a good job in life, no matter in what area is, is our, our, our uh, physical and mental health, okay? Being more happy a person, being more patient person, you know, more, more, more peace with your wife, more respecting the elders, okay? Being more mensch, this is the indication. Sometimes you study more Torah, sometimes less, sometimes you pray more, sometimes less, sometimes you eat uh, this food, sometimes that, but, but eventually, we have to become better, better human beings. Mm -hmm. And if we connect it to, to the October 7th, uh, we see, we look at the world, we look at Israel, and we're in a time that there was never so much abundance like in this, this yeah. area of life. Food and, and, and houses and, and material in the material world. In, there's so much. And then and then in the spiritual world, there was never so many synagogues and, and so many places to study Torah and meditation and yoga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and what's missing is that that level between uh, uh, people, uh, persons. Mitzvot ben adam lechavero. How you say in English? Mitzvah ben adam lechavero. Um, mitzvah between man and his fellow man. Yes. So so the, 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 to, to be more patient, more to listen more peace okay inside in in the family in the in the basketball court okay uh, uh, and then and then in the world because it's amazing it's we, we have everything and we don't have peace we have nothing okay i say it's like a couple that build a, a house in millions of dollars and they have a, a, a castle with 10 rooms and everything from gold made of gold and silver but they forgot to invest in the 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 the, the peace between themselves, 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, with the patient and the love and the care. So they live in a castle, but it's hell. And then if you put your energy and time and money and thought in, in, in working on those, the level of uh, the values and the courtesy uh, uh, and the good deeds. So, you know, even if, if you, you live in a, in a small house, uh, you feel in heaven. Okay. And that's easy to see. And we feel it in Israel now, you know, we, 76 years, we, we did so many great things and, and, and built houses and, 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 and roads and, and, and you know, uh, uh, being, being uh, championships in, in uh, you know, the best in, in Nobel Prize and, and, and uh, the army and the, 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 the doctors, and, but we forgot how to live in peace together okay yeah. and we don't have that we don't have everything and, and i think the world is is waiting for us to to show them how how to 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 to, to have a good society with justice that live in peace together they can you know accept and 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 contain and and find the, the good in each part of, of the, the the nation you know like the tra- 12 tribes you know there's a religion and a secular, and there's like an army, you know, you have the Air Force, and you have the Navy, and you have an intelligent, but it's one army, okay, and this is what we, uh, our biggest challenge now, and, and you know, it's it's uh, thousands of years that that we still didn't find the way to make that startup, to the startup, how to, to live in peace together, and hopefully we can, you know, from this uh, crisis grow, and, 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 uh, and learn and become mm-hmm. a much much better uh, uh, society, much better uh, a nation, and bring our good light to bring to the world. Mashiach. Mashiach, yeah, yeah. So one of the things also you mentioned, or perhaps we'll start this, is that and like we were talking about distancing something in order to like come back to it in a in a beautiful way. There's a line once I heard from a, a movie. It was how do you walk away from something only to re- to back only back to it, and like we were talking about with with Judaism with Torah and mitzvahs, I feel like it also related a lot with with basketball, and, and you mentioned that the, um, not to not to let the game of basketball or other things in life take control of our game of life. How did you, especially playing to a you know a high level, you know? Thank God I got to play uh, in college, but I feel like it did <laughs> kind of. That's like that was everything. Is like wanting to continue to playing, like also, uh, for, also, for, also. Yeah, for me as well. It it uh, it took control of my life in an early age, and it wasn't in a balanced way, and and wasn't in a healthy way. I took it too much seriously. I brought it into uh, to, to brought the game into home after the, the the it's over, you know, and took it too much too much to the heart, you know. I I was uh, I'm writing about my uh, my 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 fears and the tension and the anxiety and, and 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 a lot of them I I kept in my stomach and didn't share and didn't there wasn't God to to talk with. I I was ashamed to go to a uh, uh, sports psychiatry at, at, at the early age and you know it, one of the reasons I, I, I understand and feel that, that the cancer was created you know out of not dealing with the stress in yeah. a good way and, and and that was one of my understanding that I have to put basketball in a more uh, in, a, in, in, in a different perspective in a more take it in a more balanced way and you know when we lose we lose and when sometimes I don't play well, I don't don't take it too personally, you know. Obviously, you know, yeah. come back and work and 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 train and do my best, but you know, take it in 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 a much more healthy and balanced way. And that was actually um, when I came back to play after cancer. Uh, it was it was for me uh, something very exciting because uh, and very special because I came back after two and a half years while treating. You know, while going to India and South America, and then my spiritual journey, and then dealing with cancer, and with cancer, it, it like I took it as a utilize it to 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 learn 
and to grow and to become a much more healthy person, you know, ask questions that I didn't ask until that point, change many uh, bad habits that, that I used to do with food, with dealing with stress, with fears, you know, get stronger with the Munah and Bitachon, you know, in faith. And then coming back to play to the same courts, to the same uh, uh, fans, same players, and 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 same ball and a different different ball game you know because because I was different Ooh, yeah and then I played in a much more uh, a free way much more natural you know after losses after bad games I I, I you know I I was it became uh, more of a I, I wrote once when I experienced similar it became more of an expression of who you are rather than your identity. Yes, and then much more rejuvenating, much more, you know, uh, uh, joyful. After Maccabi Tel Aviv went to Jerusalem and we had probably one of the best years ever in, in, in for, for the Apple Jerusalem club. And for me personally, I was winning the European Championship, the ULEP Cup against Real Madrid. And that was for me like was a very sweet comeback in many ways. And... Um, and then it was, you know, the, the beginning of the end of my career, you know, I, I had a few more years, but uh, 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 it was like the, the, the peak after after two, two and a half years uh, uh, being outside of the court and, and far away from the game and dealing with cancer. So it was very special and, and, and a big, a big uh, <clears throat> understanding for me that, you know, that the that, um, uh, heaven and hell is is mainly in our head, you know. Once I made, I changed myself, and you know, uh, so 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 the game changed with me, uh, and the world around me. You know, I could take it in a much more uh, balanced way and healthy way to deal with. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you for sharing all of that. It's, mm -hmm. it's like I mentioned at the beginning. It's really meaningful to have a conversation like this with somebody that. To do something similar and even to a higher, higher competitive and uh, professional level. So uh, with that, we also when we were first connecting, um, it seems you know a lot of things that I also got into. In addition to I didn't, I mean I didn't travel east, but I also got into practicing meditation as a tool of really boosting just performance of the game. But I recognized how it quickly helped in all areas of life and just living a more open and curious way instead of living by fear and um, survival emotions. And that itself also similar, like what you mentioned, transitioning to, because now as an individual, you know, living more in a state of peace and, and, and connection, you know, you didn't have more, you're more of a state to re-explore Judaism and, and what really your neshama with the soul is, is drawn after. And other things you mentioned that um, you do is I, so I also have a holistic health coaching and focus on nutrition practice and the mental performance, like I mentioned. And you also got into all those things. And you even have um, the Hewley Center with your wife. Could you talk a little bit about that and the grief to growth, which is a recent thing uh, after all the um, trauma from October 7th? I'd love to yes. hear a little bit about all of that and, you know, becoming really a holistic and, and helping other people live a balanced life. Yes. So, so naturally what happened after me personally dealing with cancer and, and really take it as a, uh, as, as a source of growth and, 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 and make a lot of change, good changes in, in my life, change bad habits and take responsibility in all, all, all aspects of, of being a human being, you know, the physical level, the mental level, the spiritual level, and, and starting to, to live in a more natural and healthy way, uh, eating more healthy, like I said, dealing with tensions and fears, utilizing them to, 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 as tools to grow, and, and, and also on the spiritual level of amina and faith, and, 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 uh, connected with, with God, not from a religion place, but from a spiritual place, a universal place. And, and then seeing, you know, that, that, that after I made those changes, you know, it became natural to, to, to utilize it to start help also people and share them about my journey and give them some, some, some advices and, 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 
and uh, and my wife also was was many years into uh, natural health uh, uh, um uh, practicing and, and living as 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 a way of living okay and both of us it was natural for us to start uh, working with people and we live in a Moshava Mirim is a place in the north of Israel that uh, very much in, in the nature and and uh, we have like a center a place that we uh, host people that come you know either for for a, a specific treatment or they come to to go through a journey of a few days a retreat that they can you know get tools and and and, and, and inspiration and and ways of living in a more natural and healthy way and like i said in all aspects and what happened since uh, october 7 that we started to work mainly with the people that got uh, affected by the by the war either people survivors from the the, the festival of nova mm -hmm. uh, or or people that lost their dear ones in the war or in, or in the festival that got got uh, slaughtered and what what we do is um, uh, we make for them retreats of a few days that they come and they get from you know from a to z everything in, in healthy food and uh, and and uh, different kind of meditation and we we walk in the nature and we do different kind of uh, activities to to give them uh, healthy food for the body for the mind and for the soul and it's uh, it's very exciting and, and it feels like a big privilege for us to 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 try and you know and give what we can give to this uh, this uh, in this important time that everybody go through a, a certain trauma a certain crisis beautiful and I'll, I'll definitely you send over a link to uh to help donate so i'll definitely post it in the, the show notes here as well and for the and to all your website so on the website you can get access to the hayuli healing center as well correct right. yes, so yes. Both yes and everything yes beautiful beautiful I hope to hope to come visit and maybe we can play ball. You still yeah. play? You still we play? Have, we play. We have a startup in the Miriam. We play ball without counting, with no counting. No. What counting. do you mean no count? No, no counting points. points. Yeah, people ask me why. So why play? <laughs> but you know, it's amazing. You 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 take out the counting points and and you stay with the natural game. You know, like much more, much more enjoy, much more. You know, moment by happen. moment. And there's only we, everybody winning, no losers. You think <laughs> about it. You think hey, that's a problem it. in some ways here in America. So, so you think about it, a good business that everybody has to win. If I win and you lose, it's not a good business. We need a win-win businesses. And and that's you think we can still have that with, but we can still have that with also having score. No. Yeah, but the problem is that a lot of time we forget and we get lost in this counting and and who's winning and losing and then you see violence and then yeah. you see you see too much tension and you see so like you that... said we have to improve we have to work on changing uh, ourselves from within. Yes, yes, because if you think about it, professional game, basketball, sport are not so healthy to the body and the mind in many ways because it's so so intense. And when the body needs to rest, they put pressure on you that you have to win and another game and you take an injection and people finish their career with, with the, the disability. Yeah. Then, you know, in football, it's even worse. People people collapse yeah, after, yeah. The, you yeah. know, and in, 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 in boxing, uh, they die. So there's something we forgot to, to, to uh, 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 react and, 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 uh, and do things out of an inner place rather than all the time be more play play instead of competition yeah yeah joyful you know that that the healthy for the body you know sweating good you know when, when the body needs to rest you know on, on the right measure and yeah. what happened is that we forgot to 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 do things out of an inner space rather than always always um, to 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 compare to the other and we lose ourselves when we compare. You know, I was in a lecture once and somebody asked me, who is better, Jordan or, or LeBron, James? So a guy said there, you know, this is an apple and this is an orange. 
you know each one is, is special you know each one is his own qualities and and i think the world it's 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 you know you can see it in all aspects in business who has more money yeah. you know in 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 the the media who has more followers and then on the spiritual level you know who who study more hours torah and who pray more and then you lose yourself yeah. because you forget you will always compare to others and we have to find the place in ourselves to be the be best version that we can be mm. and not to try to be like Mike or like anybody else okay and this is very important and 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 once somebody finds a center and find these special gifts that he has to bring to the world that nobody else can bring you know and because there's no each one is is is, is there's no, mm -hmm. nobody like you like Shlomo held in all, all the, the millions of, of people. And when we find our gift, our special uh, um, thing that we, we can bring, the team, the, the family, the, the community, the world, then you find the happiness. Then you find balance. And Beautiful. when you try to be somebody else, it's, it, we, we will fail no matter what. Okay? Mm -hmm. and, and the thing is not to be now not, not doing anything. Find this good, good fire to do but not something that that I will win and that the other person will lose because of it, okay? But something that everybody can win and everybody could elevate and grow together. And this is a big revolution for us as society, for us as people. But this is a glimpse of the the the, the Yamota Mashiach, yeah. okay? That each one. Good. I'm is, excited to see. I'm excited to see how the game of basketball is. In the I I asked one time. I was working here in uh, in Crown Heights, Brooklyn. I, you know, with the the center of Lubavitch, and, and the Chabad movement. And I was working and coaching some kids basketball. And I asked one of the coaches. I said, "Think there's going to be basketball in the Mashiach times?" Mm -hmm. And he said, "No, we're not going to be. We're going to be so focused on other things." He and he asked me, and I said, "Yeah, for sure. We're going to be playing it in like the holiest way that God intended it to be played." And so I I hope so. I think I think, really cool I think if we don't if you don't count. So it's, you know, this much more natural and joy. You can work. There's many amazing things you can study and learn from the game, you know. Yeah, you yeah. Concentrate and, and playing together and, you know, sweating good and, and flexibility. But you have to do it in yeah. the right measure. I think we see that today. If Even if you look at the NBA, I think looking at it and this generation, it's become more of a, it's like an art. If you watch how it the guys is, play, it, it, it is an, an art. Expression. It, you, you look, it look it at how the players. It can be also are... a war. It can be also yeah. a war. You know, it depends <laughs> what you do with it. It's the like war. every other thing. You know, money yeah. can be a blessing and be be a curse. Mm -hmm. uh, how, how did you earn the money? What you do with the money? Okay, you 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 okay? You stole the money. You 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 make the money with with dignity, okay, with honor. So 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 all of those questions. Food can 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 be nutri good sure. nutrition, give you life, but also kill you. Yeah. How much you eat, what you eat. So this and the same the Torah, you know, can be for yeah. the life uh, for 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 God forbidding uh, all the wars in the name of God. Yeah. Yeah. So so the the ball is in our hand. We choose what to do with the money, how to to turn it to, with the basketball game with the Torah and take everything and elevate. And, and like I said, the indication we're doing something right is that we're becoming better, better human beings, becoming mensch. And then, you know, it's a win-win. There's enough for everybody. We don't have to fight. Yeah. Okay. We, we can enjoy, we can help each other. We can be together. We can, you know, brothers and sisters. Beautiful. Doron, it's been a real pleasure. Thank you for taking your time to come and speak with me. I really hope to uh, come shoot some hoops up sometime soon together. A win-win, win-win game. With win -win game. All the best. Have a wonderful week and uh, Shabbos and new month. Thank you. Thank you very much. You too.